what's the best aquarium filter? Stay tuned to hear a whole bunch of different people answer that. Hey folks, it's John with KeepFishKeeping.com. Super excited to bring you the continuation of our simple fish keeping series where we gather up a whole bunch of other YouTubers to get them to answer that question that I asked in the beginning. So let's get right into it. Here is the panel answering the question, what is the best aquarium filter? And stay tuned to find out the winner of last week's giveaway and what we're giving away this week. The best filter for an aquarium, right? So I basically use everything from no filters to big canister filters, to just small internal filters, to bigger internal filters to hang on the back. I use them all. I've used all the budget ones as well. And I can tell you they're all good. <laughs> I mean, they are for me. I have planted tanks, remember, so I can get away with a lot. Like I say, I don't need to have any filter in a lot of my tanks because I don't keep the stocking really high. Quite low stocking, a ton of plants. So I'm not the best person to ask on, on filters, to be honest, because everyone I've used has been good in some way. Some are better than others, of course. You can get ones with built-in heaters, built-in pre-filters. Those are really good. Uh, you get what you pay for. You know, they, they cost quite a bit more. Um, but for me, a hang on the back filter can work really nicely as well if you don't want too much flow in the tank because you know, it just trickles in. But my absolute favorite, if I'm honest, is just a nice small black internal filter with a spray bar. I just find it rotates the water nicely, picks up all the dirt and gunk, detritus, dust in the water column, all that kind of thing, and easy just to pull it out and clean it in no time at all. In terms of keeping water really, really clear, I mean, a sponge filter makes your water so, so clean. Um, it takes out all the finer particles. There's not loads of flow in the tank as a result um, because it's just bubbling away, isn't it? And it just gets it crystal clear. Hi, I'm Joanna with the Smallscape, and what is my favorite filter? For me, it absolutely has to be the Hang On Back filter. Why? Well, two reasons. Mainly because I am an aquascaper, so I really value the aquascape going on in the tank. The Hang On Back filter takes up much less room than, say, the sponge filter. You don't even have to really plan your scape around it because it takes up such little room. Most of the actual filter is outside of the tank. The second reason I really like Hang On Backs is for maintenance purposes, I find them very easy to maintain and reach because they are hanging on back of the tank. The best aquarium filter is one that is properly sized for your aquarium. I mean, uh, coming from somebody that has built every method of filtration and every type, um, it's really difficult to say what is the best. We can talk about pros and cons to everything. And it's really gonna come down to the size of the aquarium, your budget, your ongoing budget for power and whatnot, and the needs of the fish. Now, I've shown that you can keep aquariums of every size using every method of filtration so long as it's properly sized not only for the aquarium but the inhabitants that are actually in it so it's going to come down to flow rates and uh, size uh, biological capacity of your filters i don't think there's a best filter i think that we could talk about the pros and cons to each one individually but when, in my opinion everything can work so long as it's properly sized my favorite filter to use is hands down the SunSun Sun external canister filter. That's for a few different reasons. First, it's affordable. Second, it's very simple. And third, and most importantly, it's reliable. I use it in majority of my setups and I've never had an issue. The best type of filter depends on the tank size and your vision, but if I had to choose the best filter for just your average aquarium, it'd have to be the hang on back filter. They take up minimal space within the aquarium, are easy to use and service, and they come in a variety of sizes. You can also outfit the intake with a sponge filter, which allows you to get double duty. They were the first filters I used when I began keeping fish, and I still use them 15 years later and I love them. In fact, all of the tanks you just saw use this type of filter. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. What is the best type of filter? For us, I think the best type of filter is a hang on back filter. I like the fact that the price point is competitive, that it doesn't take up a lot of space in the tank and that they are easy to maintain. The best type of hang on back filter for us has two features. Feature number one is a motor that is inside the tank. It's an internal motor. It's actually in the water. And the reason we like those is one, they tend to be very quiet and two, they tend to be self-priming, which means the back of the filter doesn't need to be filled with water in order for it to run. 
that can be especially important when you're dealing with a power outage. The second feature I must have on a hang up back filter is adjustable flow. That allows us to put a larger filter on a smaller tank or if we've got a group of fish that don't require high flow, we can turn that flow down to best meet their needs. My number one filter is gonna have to be the sponge filter. The reason why I like it so much is because it's so versatile. It can go in little tanks, nano tanks, large tanks. It can even go in sumps to just help with collecting the beneficial bacteria to start a new tank with it. I love the small ones because they're so super cute. You can get the little ones that attach to the side of the tank or you can just get your, your regular little ones and stick it in the tank. Depending on what size tank you have, you have so many to choose from and they're just amazing. And if you have a shrimp or a lot of shrimp, then they like to do their little creepy crawly things on there and they just love having the sponge filters. And they're really cool to have for backups too. Like if you're, I don't know, if something goes out, the electric or whatever, and you have one of those battery operated um, uh, air pumps, you can attach it to it and your tank will just continue going and your fish won't even know any, they won't even know any better. But the most important thing is that it does help do a wonderful job keeping your tank clean and keeping your fish healthy and happy. And that's the most important part, right? So what is the best type of aquarium filter? Well, honestly, it depends, but I'll give you two answers. One is my personal preference, which I have a lot of experience with, and that's going to be sponge filters. I have dozens of aquariums set up and have used them in hundreds of tanks over the years. Because I have so many aquariums, I prefer to use a linear air pump to power all of my sponge filters. That way I don't have to tie up so many electrical outlets with hang on backs or canister filters. Honestly, the best aquarium filter is the one that you already have. Most aquarium filter styles, whether it be a canister filter, a hang on back or a sump, can be modified to perform better in your aquarium. There are a lot of videos out there. Just go search it and you'll find different ways to hot rod or increase the performance of the filter you already have. But if you don't have a filter yet and you're looking at what type to get, I definitely recommend looking into sponge filters. All right, it is time to announce the winner of last week's giveaway of the Tidal Filter. Congratulations to JDub1961. JDub, please email me at kgtropicals at gmail.com so that I can get your contact details and I will get that filter sent right out to you. Folks, you want to know how he won this filter? He won it by being a U.S. resident, by commenting on last week's video and liking the video, and also being a subscriber to the KG Tropicals YouTube channel. This week, we're going to do the same thing, except we're giving away a $50 gift card to keepfishkeeping.com. So if you want to win that, be a subscriber that lives in the United States, like this video and comment on this video, and you're automatically entered. So good luck and let's get right back to it for my favorite filter i have one for my larger tanks and one for my smaller tanks for upstairs for my monster fish room i really enjoy the fluval fx4 i've had this filter now for a couple of years and i love how easy it is to work with when it comes to maintenance and everything about it it is a fantastic filter for my smaller tanks downstairs, it's the filter I've used since I was a child. It's the Tetra Whisper Filter. It's a hang on the back. I do not recommend buying the inserts. It's one of my favorite aspects is how easy you can modify it. I do stuff this filter full of aquarium sponge and in an aquarium bag some extra media inside there. but. It's quiet and efficient, and I've used this filter for a long time. So those two, the FX4 and the Tetra Whisper filter, are definitely my favorite ones. I haven't watched the clips that have been sent to me answering this question yet, but I think it's a safe bet. A lot of people have said sponge filters are the best aquarium filters. I'm not going to argue with those people, but I'm going to speak to a different group of people today. I'm going to speak to the people who want big tanks like this one here behind me. Actually. No, maybe not this one. We'll, 
We'll talk about that in a second. But what about the people that like to keep larger aquariums? You're gonna want something more than just a sponge filter sitting in the corner. Because if you have 125 gallons and up, it's probably not gonna do with just sponge filters unless you had a whole row of them going across the back and nobody wants that. You want a little extra polishing? Sure, a sponge filter would be great, but what do you want to use to do the heavy lifting in your larger aquarium? I'm gonna suggest canister filters. I don't particularly care what brand you use, whether it's the CJ's or the Fluval 7 Series or FX Series, the Marine Lands, there's a whole lot of really good canister filters out there, and I am a huge fan. Now, when you move up to something giant like this, you're gonna have multiple canisters on a tank that size, so you'd probably move up to a sump. That's a conversation for another day, but if you've got something 125 gallons up to uh, even like a 240 gallon, uh, canister filters are gonna be great for that. Uh, again, with 240s, you might have multiples, uh, but still, canisters are gonna do the job and they're gonna do it really well. And the biggest thing that I like about canisters is that they are absolutely silent. There's no such thing as a silent sump system. At least I haven't found one yet. Sumps are great, but they're also kind of loud. Canister filters, you don't even hear anything. They're quiet, they're easy to maintain, contrary to what people might think. As long as you can get that thing out from underneath the tank, they're easy to maintain. They're expensive, but you know what? You're buying an expensive tank anyway, so you can handle it. Yeah, canister filters, I love them. And if I had my way, every single aquarium I have would be on canisters, just because they're so quiet. The best filter, the best filter is the one that you own. But in most applications, I use canister filters. When it's a larger system, I would use a sump. Smaller systems, I would use an internal filter or a hang on the back. I'm not a fan of sponge filters. They're dirty, they're messy, they only perform one or two functions. And honestly, they're an eyesore, they're hideous. You can get a Shark ADV and do all of the same things and it looks better, it's easier to maintain and yeah. So it's the one you have, but canisters, sump, internal, hang on the back. And I don't recommend sponge filters unless you have a hundred tanks. That's it. I'm Jay Wilson and you're free to watch some of my videos. Ow! What's cracking, YouTube? It's me, the Biz, Fishy Biz, Aquatics, Professional Aquatics with the Amateur Touch. So amateurs, yep. So you want to know what's the best type of filter, huh? Well, if you're asking me, it's going to be the HOB all day long or hang on the back filter. Um, basically for the convenience. Easy to set up, easy to install, easy to clean, and easy to use. Simple as that. If you're a beginner fish keeper, hang on the back filter is probably going to be the one that you choose to be on the back of your tanks. And there's plenty of them, so you can definitely do your research on them. But um, if you want it, take it from a guy that's been using HOBs for years. I like the title. That's T I D A L. Anyway, the instructions are right there in the pack. Pretty much set them up all the same. Except for the title and stuff. I don't know. You'll find out. So, get your HOB filter, take it out the box, put the media in as the direction shows, close it up in the water, plug her in, and enjoy the filtration. And enjoy the, the agitation. Enjoy the cleanliness. Go do it and tell them the biz sent you. Thanks for having me on here. Thanks for watching. I'm your boy LRB. I'm an aquarium hoarder. Some of you guys may have heard it from me. But anyways, this is a tough question. What is the best filtration? So the best filtration, in my opinion, depends on what you got going on for you. So let's say you got a big display tank. You want tons of fish in it or you want big fish in it, I would definitely recommend either a canister or like a sump filtration or something like that. Because when we think about filtration, more beneficial bacteria that you can get the water to flow through, the more that you have to help clean it. 
Now this won't get rid of all your algae. It can help break those things down and excess organics and stuff like that. Same with the food and the waste that happens. But say you just have a aquarium that you want to put on your desk at work and you're keeping something small in there like tetras or rasboras. I would say don't even bother with a filter. You don't even need a filter. Don't even need an airline. And I know this sounds foreign to a lot of you, but I actually keep a lot of stuff like that with no airline. Just let Mother Nature do the work. She's been doing it forever. And uh, it's amazing what Mother Nature can really do. A lot of times we try to make our tanks too sterile. Sometimes these fish, they get tired of fighting through the current. They like somewhere peaceful to uh, stay. Like when you see them out in the wild, uh, they like to stay in like the slower waters. They aren't usually in the rapids. But once in a while they may go through there, but they definitely aren't chilling there. So think about that too with the current and the flow. Same thing with your plants. Your plants will do amazing with no filter as well. And um, yeah, when it comes to filtration, it really depends on what you're keeping. The bigger fish, bigger waste, more you're gonna have to clean that through. And I'm trying to do it in a certain body of water depending on your tank size. Um, you may want something to run that through, sump or a fil canister filter. Hang on the back, I don't think I would mess on with that so much, but definitely uh, like your community fish, your danios, your tetras, your rasboras, your rainbow fish, your endlers, your killies, your quarry cats, um, all those really don't need filtration. They don't even need a airline. I would say it's really up to you, so it depends on what you're keeping, what your budget is, and since this is such a loaded question, I mean, you could always check out my channel where I talk about it a little more. Plus, you may have heard this thing bubbling and this thing buzzing. The good thing about no filters is the fact that you don't hear that, but this is one of the uh, rare racks that I have not pulled them off yet. But you can see, like, it's barely even working in there. But yeah, in a nutshell, there's the best uh, filtration. So there you go. If you are in the market for a filter and you don't know what kind to get, you just got the opinions of a whole bunch of people that you've probably already seen on YouTube. You love them, they're awesome. They create wonderful content for you for free. Why not listen to those people? But the cool thing about this and what I love about this series is that you're not just getting my opinion. You're getting a whole bunch of people's opinion. Saves you the time having to go out and watch 10 different videos to get what you can get in one video here. So yeah, I love it. I am enjoying this series. I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to be here next week to see who wins this week's giveaway and to find out what next week's giveaway is. This is a big deal. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Make sure you subscribe so that you uh, get notified and make sure you ring the bell, do that whole thing so that you get notified and you don't miss out because we don't want you to miss it. <laughs>